Low progesterone in the luteal phase often comes along with pre-period anxiety, depression, spotting, sleep disturbances, fatigue, and even constipation. If you're a fitness coach looking to unravel hormone health in your own life and in your client's life, you have come to the right place. And if you stay until the end, you will have an in-depth understanding of how progesterone imbalance happens, the telltale signs of low progesterone, and how to support progesterone balance with food, fitness, and lifestyle. My name is Omega. I am an exercise scientist, a menstrual cycle educator, and founder of the first hormone health certification program for personal trainers. My journey was marked by overcoming hypothyroid syndrome, PCOS, healing my trauma, and healing my gut issues, and all of this ignited a passion to help bridge the gap between fitness and hormonal wellness. Um, and if that sounds at all familiar to you, uh, I'm so glad you're here again. <laughs> My mission here is to make the fitness industry more hormone friendly, and I'm doing this here through YouTube, through Instagram, which you can find in the description below, at Cycle Coach Academy, and I also do that in my Cycle Coach Academy. My goal is to equip you with the skills, the evidence-based solutions, and ultimately help you build your confidence to support your clients all within your scope of practice. Give me a thumbs up if that's what you're here for too. Um, and if you're ready to apply for the Cycle Coach Academy, if you've been around for a while, you will find an application button below. Just look for the word apply. You'll spend 10 minutes filling out an application and you'll hear back from my team in 24 hours. So here is Beck who balanced her progesterone, reduced her cyclical anxiety, and she had the first most symptom-free luteal phase in just one cycle using the recommendations that I teach in the academy and I'm gonna teach you here right now all about low progesterone. Let's start with what progesterone does and what happens if it's too low, which it is for lots of people. First things first, progesterone is the hormone that increases after ovulation. Along with building up the lining of the uterus, it also supports mood regulation and sleep. Progesterone should reach its maximum threshold around the middle of the luteal phase, which is about 14 days. So if you have a 28 day cycle, which a lot of us do, this threshold of progesterone would be reached on day 21. If everything is working properly, we should feel like so relaxed before our period, but most of us don't because we don't have enough progesterone and low progesterone often and inevitably means that estrogen is running the show in the luteal phase, which is the opposite of what you want. Estrogen excess, which is the case in this scenario, is referred to as estrogen dominance. And while you support the liver and the colon in clearing estrogen, when I say that, it means you poop it out. Got my little hip twist there too. Uh, you also need to support progesterone balance. So I want you to finish this video and then after this video, I have this video on hormone balance right here, which I will also just link in the description too so you can find it later. Now, the effects of low progesterone on mood, sleep, and digestion. This is, this is gonna be real fun, I know we've all been here. People with low progesterone often face mood issues in their late luteal phase. I know that I'm not the only person who had relationship issues emphasized in the luteal phase. And while relational issues are not due to hormone issues and you shouldn't be like that on yourself, you know what I mean? I want to share that progesterone does support our mood regulating neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. So when progesterone is out of balance, we will notice emotions so poorly categorized as mood swings, but really it's an imbalance of neurotransmitters. Sleep is impacted for a similar reason. Progesterone should have like this calming effect on our body via the neurotransmitters that I just mentioned. Progesterone should have a calming effect on the brain via the neurotransmitters I just mentioned, as well as one of the sleep-inducing neurotransmitters, GABA. In the luteal phase, when I got my progesterone balanced, I actually noticed better sleep. So if 
your client or even you notices sleep pattern changes, nighttime wakefulness, or interrupted sleep in the luteal phase, progesterone changes could be related. Progesterone changes can also negatively impact digestion as well. In the luteal phase, progesterone can slow gastric transit leading to constipation. This is really not good if we're in estrogen excess because our body will end up not clearing estrogen. Instead of pooping out estrogen, the body actually sends it back to the liver for reprocessing. But if you've dealt with any of this stuff, digestion changes, sleep changes, and mood changes, you are not alone on this journey. Now let's talk about progesterone and fitness. If you're trying to increase progesterone, we also need to look at fitness and intensity as well. I know a lot of personal trainers have strong opinions about cycle syncing, but let me assure you that this is all going to make sense. One recommendation I teach in the Cycle Coach Academy is to decrease stressors in the luteal phase if low progesterone has been identified. This is because cortisol and progesterone are essentially at odds with each other. If cortisol is high in the luteal phase, progesterone has a hard time reaching its threshold that we talked about for hormone balance. So that's why around day 21, you're like, oh my God, why do I feel like crap? Oh, it's my period <gasps> coming in a week. This is important for personal trainers to understand because women who overexercise are at risk for hormone imbalance. You can probably see a client in your mind's eye who is that overachieving go-getter who can always be seen doing hit, trying to max out on their deadlifts, etc. Or maybe they're not their, your client because your client would probably know better, okay? I share this in other videos, but for one year, I didn't do any heavy lifting while I was healing my hormones. And while this is not what I'd recommend for most people, I'm not saying go do this, I do want to help paint a picture of how important dialing back exercise intensity is if hormone imbalance has been identified. Now let's get into some nutritional approaches you can holistically integrate into your client sessions to get those hormone health transformation all within your scope of practice. This article published in the Journal of Scientific Reports showed us that managing nutrition is a helpful strategy for managing PMS and even PMDD. This article highlights the importance of vitamin D combined with calcium, magnesium, omega-3 and 6 and glutathione. And while you're like, okay, I'll just buy these supplements. Supplements, they're so helpful and convenient, but remember food has cofactors that help support the body in using these nutrients. So helping your clients identify stress management styles is important as well. And like I said before, it's different for everyone, but research does identify that repetitive slow movements like <laughs> walking are most helpful to get people into a meditative state. For me, it's uh, breathing and yoga. That's what I turn to when I need to relax. For others, it might be taking a walk through the woods or doing something else, cold plunge, I don't know. It's up to you to ask the right questions and it's up to your clients to implement the right strategies for stress management um, that they know is gonna work for their life. Now we have to talk about blood sugar management. It's also extremely important for the exact same reason that managing cortisol is. When blood sugar goes down, cortisol goes up and progesterone has a harder time reaching its threshold. If you remember Beck, who I mentioned at the beginning of this video, she worked with a practice client and identified low progesterone for her as well. So one of the recommendations that she gave her was the blood sugar balancing basics that I teach in the Cycle Coach Academy, which resulted in a significant decrease in her practice client's anxiety. Eating every two to four hours is ideal for managing blood sugar. Not only that, but eating enough protein is key for managing hormones and managing PMS, especially in the luteal phase. Three nutrition approaches that work to support progesterone while decreasing estrogen include eating all your B vitamins, eating cruciferous vegetables, and eating enough fiber. I have this estrogen balancing basics video right here, and I will link that in the description below. So how do you gauge success in progesterone management? 
you'll know that you're on the right path with progesterone support when you see these changes in your clients or even yourself. So here we go. Commit these to memory, even write them down. Reduce spotting, enhance mood, less anxiety and depression, and possibly improved sleep. Now you know the mechanisms of progesterone balance, how to identify low progesterone, and what happens when it's out of balance, and how to bring it back into balance. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you're a personal trainer that's into hormone health, like this video, and leave a comment to boost it in the algorithm so we can all make the fitness industry more hormone friendly. If you're ready to dive deep into mentorship and training in the Cycle Coach Academy, look for apply in the description box below. Click that link and you'll spend just 10 minutes on an application and you can expect a response from me or my team within 24 hours. And if you are eligible, we will then take it to the next step where we do an application call to explore if working together is a fit for both of us. Watch this video next on estrogen balance so you have an even fuller picture of how to help your clients have the best hormone health transformation. I'll see you there. Bye.